The time has finally come to expertise Constantine, so stick around in this video to see why we're finally pulling the trigger, along with a few of the very best builds that we can recommend. Yeah, Constantine is a very solid commander. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskel Gaming, a sponsored content creator for Rise of Kingdoms, and today we're going to be talking all about Constantine, who we will be expertising, putting our money where our mouth is, that they are a commander worthy of legendary commander sculptures. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, consider smashing that subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. We are in Heroic Anthem, Kingdom vs. Kingdom, the first time we've been there, and there is a lot to talk about that adds complexity and gives us additional reason to expertise Constantine. But overall, why are we going for this commander? He is a staple in Canyon. He is solid in the field. And as a garrison commander, he's still getting use by some players and getting really positive trades. Look no further than the Ark of Osiris League Grand Champions to see what they were using in the open field. Yeah, Constantine is there. And just to show just how Often, you will see Constantine in Canyon. I think every single top-tier team in Canyon is using a Constantine Joan, with the exception of Sendu. Okay, one team. He's using Hannibal Barca and Caesar, though, so I have no clue what's going on there. Here is Constantine again. Constantine, Constantine. I mean, you get the idea. He's popular, and it's not just because he's fun to use. No, he is just really freaking outstanding in this game mode. It is undeniable. Look at that. Another missing Constantine. Very curious. Now, you may be wondering, of course, why is it that Constantine is so exceptional in that game mode and in all of these other game modes? It is because he reduces the damage taken by all nearby marches by 10%. That is huge. He reduces the attack of the target by a very significant amount. He is also a garrison commander, and he's got some staying power from the fourth skill, which grants a large one-time heal and also makes your shields much more effective. The additional incentive that we have in this heroic anthem, Kingdom versus Kingdom, is that he's also got a support skill. So in heroic anthem KVK, there are bastions where there are commanders that give you skills that you can use on other commanders. And if all of that sounds really complicated and you're before your second or first season of KVK and you haven't heard of any of this sort of stuff before, don't worry, this will all make sense later. In fact, I've got a video explaining that in great depth. I'll have a card up in the top for that. But I want to make sure I've got the ability to have a max skill, garrison skill from Constantine available to me to use on my city wall because, yeah, I take risks and I'd like to be able to defend my city expertly when I do. So right now I've got a garrison support skill from Charles Martel. I also have Tragedy's End, Kusunoki's damage skill, because it's just a lot of damage to deal. But I would prefer to get Impasse set up on the wall. In fact, I will save that right now. Boom. Great anti-Attila Takeda technology. Reducing the normal attack damage taken from cavalry by 10% is really quite a big deal in the craziness that is the Attila Takeda city rallying meta. But let's get right to the main event here and go expertise this commander. And there are a couple of things that I will gain when I've finally done that. First of all, I'm going to get a little bit of an extra heal, which will be nice. I'll get that garrison skill. Boom, move over those sculptures. And the expertise skill is really very solid. 15% attack, 5% defense. That is for all troop types. That is honestly so many stats. That is like giving my Canyon March or my Field March, where I'm using Constantine, the equivalent of a legendary, not special talented, but legendary weapon, which is kind of a big deal. So here we are, finally, Constantine, ready to be expertise. We smash the button and boom. We are, what, 800 plus days into Rise of Kingdoms, and we've now expertise Constantine as well. I am really excited to be using this commander, and you may be wondering, okay, besides Canyon, and even for Canyon, what builds would you recommend? We've got a number that we use. This particular build that we use for Canyon is very weird. We're doing some unusual stuff with march speed in order to get all the marches to line up just right, and it's working shockingly well. However, for most players that don't have 
William in their lineup, I'm going to recommend a Canyon build that looks like this. It is going to give you a lot of value, a bunch of stats, and if you pair with Joan of Arc, who does healing, you will get benefit from counterattack, which is going to give you 9% extra attack for three seconds every time you get a little heal from Joan of Arc. I think this is a really solid canyon build, focusing on all the things that matter the most, and that is smashing. We even get a few extra stat points off to the side over here, and if you wanted to support your Ethelflaed by providing an additional round of March speed debuffs, you could put one point into Cage of Thorns, and that is probably worth it. I didn't do that in my build because I wasn't using Ethelflaed at the time. I might go back and revisit that. I do feel like, by the way, Ethelflaed is basically a mandatory component of any Canyon team at this point. If you were to go and build this yourself, I'd start by going to Rejuvenate. Then you could make your way up to hold the line from there, Emergency Protection. After that, you've got some extra points you can put as you see fit into different places. You could theoretically, for Canyon, skip out on Iron Spear, but with the addition of William, we are seeing a bit of a resurgence of cavalry, so I think Iron Spear is good to have. The next build I want to show you is Open Field. And for the Open Field build, I go all in on the Infantry Tree, literally every single talent point, and I want to put an emphasis on the importance here of March Speed. Constantine has no March Speed. He's basically a sitting duck. So you're going to want to pair with a commander like Alexander the Great or even potentially Harold to get a little bit of march speed going here to move around the battlefield. Charles Martel is another great option, an infantry commander with march speed. But with that said, I did also still get Rejuvenate because the rage restoration there is massive, as well as loose formation to reduce the skill damage that you're taking. In a big brawl in Ark of Osiris, you need the march speed to get to the fight fast and you need to reduce the skill damage you're taking so that you can actually survive a meaningful amount of time. And yeah, there is a lot of skill damage going on in that style of brawl. If you are going to make this build, start by getting Rejuvenate, head up to Elite Soldiers. From there, you have choices. I would probably go for Fleet of Foot next. And from there, there's not a lot of preference around exactly which points you do next. You're pretty much at the finish line anyways. If you wanted to garrison in Ark of Osiris, here is a build that I can recommend. It goes pretty heavily into the garrison tree, specifically to get King's Guard, which is giving you an astonishing amount of stats. I've also gone pretty heavily into the support tree with a minimal amount of additional points dropped into the infantry tree in order to get the additional damage to cavalry, because yeah, you are trying to counter cavalry with your Constantine, Double-headed axe to boost your normal attack damage, which, by the way, increases your damage two ways. It's boosting your white damage, both all damage you deal to the main target you're hitting, as well as counterattack damage gets boost. And you're going to do a lot of counterattack damage if your garrison is getting swarmed, which is likely to happen in Ark of Osiris. So I thought that combination of talents was a pretty solid way to go. You could make an argument that you would want to ditch Call of the Pack and instead get Undying Fury. Theoretically, you might want to ditch some of the points from Emergency Protection to get Strong of Body, or you could even make the argument that you ditch Kingsguard entirely and make your way up to Strong of Body instead. There are a lot of arguments to be made about the specifics of the talent tree here. Heck, you could even go all the way up to Hold the Line, and that would be a fair choice as well, ditching the points all the way down to Kingsguard to make that happen, and maybe even shedding emergency protection to have enough to go pretty deep into this tree. The downside of that is that it will require you to have all infantry, which may not happen in a perfect world. In Ark of Osiris, sure, you might have it, but reality is sometimes very different. I mention all of these variations because a part of what makes this commander really quite exceptional is that all three of their talent trees are super legit. Especially for a garrison situation, you actually have a very meaningful amount of choices and it's nice to work through what those choices could be. The final build I've prepared here is for city defense. And again, there is a ton of variety to what you might do depending on what they're rallying with. I mean, you'll know when the rally's on its way over whether or not it's cavalry and whether or not you should keep Iron Spear boosting the damage you would deal to cavalry. You'll know if it's Attila Takeda or not, which would give a strong indication if you want the talent points that give a lot of anti-skill technology, or if they should go somewhere else because your opponent is not doing lots of skill damage. 
there is a lot of flexibility here. However, I will point out that in many ways, other commanders might be better suited for city defense, assuming you're not going to be multi-rallied. If you are multi-rallied, the good news is that Know Thy Enemy is really good. And there's a lot of great points there. But I actually am struggling a little bit, a little bit, to find exactly what would be ideal in a build for defending your city, specifically against Attila Takeda. I actually think using a Charles Martel as the primary and a Constantine secondary will be a better choice in that instance because the defense tree is just so good. And I feel like there's a lot of points that I would want to apply here in the infantry tree specifically that don't give me a lot of value. The whole right-hand side of the tree is march speed, which I don't care about. The whole left-hand side of the tree at the top requires you to have all infantry, not the case for defending your city. I'm not saying you shouldn't use Constantine. I'm just saying maybe he should be the secondary commander. Of course, if you're up against Nebu and Cyrus hitting your city, I mean, hopefully you've got a even stronger garrison commander than Constantine to take that rally. But if you were deciding between like a Constantine and Martel and which one do you use as primary, I would say Constantine is a pretty solid choice for all of the anti-skill damage technology that he's affording you from the support tree specifically. We now have 27 expertise to legendaries in Rise of Kingdoms. And I'm pretty sure, by the way, that I unlock some accomplishment even, some achievement for getting that Constantine knocked out. I forget exactly where that is, but I'm pretty sure there might be one in Pioneer or somewhere in Child of Fate. Is this it? Expertise to Commander's Gathering of Talents. Ah, here it is, under Gathering of Elites. Pride of Byzantium, Constantine's expertise obtained, baby. I will say that a part of the magic of Constantine is that even if you don't expertise him, taking him to 5511 will make him usable in the open field. Taking him to 5511 will completely transform your canyon lineup. And you just pair him with Joan, and you're in great shape with one of your frontline marches. That is extremely solid. And my final tips for field fighting, by the way, is that... Most people don't swarm down a Constantine as a primary focus target. They're going after the archers, the cavalry that do high skill damage. So you can hide a commander like Esong behind your Constantine and just do tons of AoE damage basically for free. Nobody's going to target you until you become the juiciest target by being more out of position, which can happen because of your march speed or because... I mean, they've just knocked out all of the other weaker targets. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, throw a like on here, consider subscribing for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos, and let me know down below in the comments, will you expertise your Constantine? And if so, how are you using them? Open field, canyon. Until next time, my friends, you have fun smashing the kingdom.